Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. It is uh, Friday the 21st of April, and today in the church we are remembering Anselm. Anselm, abbot, an archbishop and teacher of the faith, who died in the year 1109. Saint Anselm, Archbishop of Canterbury, abbot and teacher of the faith. And so let's pray as we start this new day afresh, a day that God has given us by his grace, a day we, we have never seen before and shall never see again. Let's pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt, and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as, as, man came, as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Hallelujah. I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. This is my God whom I will praise, the God of my forebears whom I will exalt. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. At the blast of your nostrils, the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. And by your invincible strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, O Lord, in the sanctuary which your hands have established. 
Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Hallelujah. <clears throat> death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? And our psalm this morning is Psalm 61. It's psalm 61. First, the refrain. You are my refuge, O God, a strong tower against the enemy. Hear my cry, O God, and listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I call to you with fainting heart. O oh, set me on the rock that is higher than I, for you are my refuge a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever and take refuge under the cover of your wings. For you, O oh God, will hear my vows. You will grant the request of those who fear your name. You will add length of days to the life of the king that his years may endure throughout all the generations. May he sit enthroned before God forever. May steadfast love and truth watch over him. So will I always sing praise to your name and day by day fulfill my vows. You are my refuge, O God, a strong tower against the enemy. And our prayer. Risen Christ, as you knew the, disi the discipline of suffering and the victory that brings us salvation, so grant us your presence in our weakness and a place in your unending kingdom, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And our collect, God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, our, our first reading, our Old Testament reading this morning is Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4, from verse 15 to 31. Deuteronomy chapter 4, uh, from verse 15, 15 to 31. Moses continued his speech, or his sermon, to the Israelites. You saw no form of any kind the day the Lord spoke to you at Horeb out of the fire. 
Therefore, watch yourselves very carefully so that you do not become corrupt and make for yourselves an idol, an image of any shape, whether formed like a man or a woman, or like any animal on earth, or any bird that flies in the air, or like any creature that moves along the ground, or any fish in the waters below. And when you look up to the sky and see the sun, the moon, and the stars, all the heavenly array, do not be enticed into bowing down to them and worshipping things the Lord your God has apportioned to all the nations under heaven. But as for you, the Lord took you and brought you out of the iron smelting furnace out of Egypt to be the people of his inheritance as you now are. The Lord was angry with me because of you and he solemnly swore that I would not cross the Jordan and enter the good land the Lord your God is giving you as your inheritance. I will die in this land. I will not cross the Jordan, but you are about to cross over and take possession of that good land. Be careful not to forget the covenant of the Lord your God that he made with you. Do not make for yourselves an idol in the form of anything the Lord your God has forbidden. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. After you have had children and grandchildren and have lived in the land a long time, if you then become corrupt and make any kind of idol doing evil in the eyes of the Lord your God and arousing his anger, I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you this day, that you will quickly perish from the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. You will not live there long, but will certainly be destroyed. The Lord will scatter you among the peoples, and only a few of you, a few of you will survive among the nations to which the Lord will drive you. Therefore, and not therefore, there you will worship man-made gods of wood and stone, which cannot see or hear or eat or smell. But if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. When you are in distress and all these things have happened to you, then in later days you will return to the Lord your God and obey him. For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon or destroy you or forget the covenant with your ancestors, which he confirmed to them by oath. All right. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, of course, Moses, in this section of, the, of Moses' sermon, he's focusing on idolatry. And he's, basically, he's saying that they are not to worship any image, any of God's creation. Uh, our, our worship is to be directed to the creator, not to his creation. And that includes anything that God has made. So uh, he starts by saying, when, when God appeared to you at Horeb, that is at Mount Sinai, you did not see his form. Uh, you didn't see what he looked like. Therefore, don't make anything that has any image of God, that, 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 you, that you fashion or form in a likeness and call it God, because you don't know what God looks like. Um, and so, and, and not, so when you look up to the sky, you see the sun, the moon, the stars, these things that God has made, don't worship them as God. Don't worship God's creation as the creator. 
Now that is, um, of course, the, the, that is a fundamental uh, command of God to all of his people everywhere. Of course, people do that all the time. Uh, in those days, people did worship uh, the, the creation, uh, things that um, actual, actual wood and stone and the sky, the sun, moon and stars. And, and they make images that fashion images in the likeness of God's creatures and, and, and claim that those creatures are the creator. So that's that's okay, but those are, but how do we, how do we um, commit this sin of idolatry today? Well, we, we do the same. We we might not we might not actually create physically create physical objects, but we still worship God's creation instead of God the Creator. It's when we when we when we put work or family. Or, or things, good things that God has given us, money, materialism, uh, material stuff. When we put these things before God, we are committing the sin of idolatry. We are, we are worshiping God's creation rather than the creator. God gives us good things for our benefit. And for, for because he loves us, because, because of his grace and favor to us. But when we turn around and make those good things, as somebody says, ultimate things, make those good things, make the creation, the creator, um, treat those things as if they are gods in our lives. And those things can be anything, as I said, it could be your career. It could be your job. It could be family members, your spouse, your husband, your wife, your children. Uh, it could be uh, um, money and, and, and so on. Uh, any good thing <laughs> that, we create, that God has given us can become ultimate things, eternal things in our hearts, in our lives. And that's, that's what we are forbidden to do. And so Moses is calling the people to, 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 to worship God and God alone. Um, there will be, there, there will be man-made gods and stone of stone and so on in the land you're going. But don't follow their example. Don't follow the, the people around you worshiping idols. Uh, you must worship your call to worship God alone. And, and you and your children and your grandchildren must seek God and not seek his creation. Um, that, is, that is fundamental point here. Because God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. God will not sit back and allow you, allow his children to be idolatrous. He will punish us. And he, and he says... The punishment here is going to be exile. They are going to be destroyed and scattered. And Moses is, is prophesying that if the children of Israel, if God's people do not worship God alone and seek to worship some other false God or God's creation as God, then the punishment for idolatry is going to be a, um, exile, banishment from the land. They're going to be scattered all over and they will have no place to stay and they will be treated with disregard and they will, they will no longer have the favor of God. But there is hope. He says, if you repent, if you turn to the Lord and seek him with all your heart, then he will restore you. He will be merciful. The Lord, your God is a merciful God. And he will not abandon or destroy you or forget his covenant with you. So there is hope for those who go astray. There's always hope for the prodigal, for those who turn their backs on God. There is always hope, but it requires repentance. It requires a turning around and saying, I will return to my father and I will say, I'm sorry, father, I have sinned. That, that is the hope. 
for those who have sinned, who have gone after idol, idols rather than worshipping the true God. All right, let's leave that there, moving on to our New Testament reading, which is John chapter 21, and uh, from verse 15 to 19. John 21, 15 to 19. <clears throat> when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. The reading of God's word. Now that's um, it's a very short bit, but it's uh, it's it's packed with truth that we need to just unpack a little bit this morning. Um, Peter, this is the very end of the gospel, of course. Um, the gospel of John. This is Jesus appearing to them at the sea, the Sea of Galilee, where they brought in 153 fish. And they're having breakfast, and Jesus is challenging Peter. Uh, Peter's love. Who do you love most, Peter? Do, we just finished talking about worshipping God over everything else. And this is what this is. Who takes first place in your life, Peter? Do you love me more than you love everything else? Do you love me more than these love me? Do you love me more than you love these people? It can be taken in different ways. And Peter says, Lord, I, yes, I do. Peter. Now, Peter is the person who, who is easy to say, yeah, yeah, of course. You know, and, and Jesus is, 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 is digging deeper. And he's challenging Peter not to just glibly say, yeah, 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 of course I do love you. Lord, of course I love you. Yeah, of course. You know that, well, of course. No, Peter, Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. What do you, what do you of course, what are you asking? What, of course. And Jesus said, Peter, <laughs> do you love me? And that third time, it sinks in. It finally reaches home to Peter. Yes, Lord, you know all things. Now, John says Peter was hurt. Now, I love that. Because it's, it's John's way of saying it finally, the penny finally drops in Peter's heart. Jesus is, is, is probing Peter's heart. And he does this for all of our sisters and brothers. There's a purpose for why he's probing Peter the way he did. Because Peter denied Jesus three times. And so there is that sense where Jesus is seeking that affirmation of Peter at least three times. To, to counteract his denial of Jesus. Uh, and, 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 you know, John says Peter was hurt. You know, that, big, that Jesus dared to ask him three times in that way. Do you love me? 
Imagine how Jesus felt when Peter denied him three times. You know, you, you, Peter being hurt is one thing. Jesus was must have been devastated. Well, of course, he knew that Peter was going to do it. But but the point is, Peter needs to feel the the the, the hurt of what it means to to throw somebody under the bus, <laughs> as it were. And so here, Jesus is reinstating Peter, but he's not glibly doing it. He's not saying, uh, you know, uh, yeah, that's, you know, of course you love me. Yeah, okay. No, he wants Peter to think, this is what I want from you, Peter. I need, I need your undivided heart. I need a heart from you that is, that is, Deeper than just a glibly saying, yes, Lord, I love you. This is the challenge for all of our sisters and brothers. It's a probe into the deepest recesses of our heart. Do you love me? Jesus is asking all of us. All of us. And I know, yeah, Lord, of course I go to church. I, I, I'm, what are you, what? What are you asking? Do you love me? Do you have a deep passion for me do you value me more than everything else in your life and, and stop think don't just say yes lord of course i do no 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 do you love me and and, and that's a question for our sisters and brothers yeah no i'm a christian oh, of course i go to church every week of course i'm I mean, um, uh, what do you mean asking me this question? Go ask that person over there. He's, he's the one who should ask, not me. And Jesus said, no, no, no. You need to think. D don't just glibly answer this question. Really, really ponder the significance of this question. Are there any idols that are crowding out Jesus in our hearts today? Do you love me more than you love anything else? Do you have a deep, deep passion for Jesus more than you do for anyone else, anything else? Sisters and brothers, that's a challenge. It's a challenge for Peter. It was a challenge for him. It's a challenge for us. It's a challenge for all the disciples. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, the probing question of our hearts this day. Do we truly love you more than we love everything else? Do we love you more than we love your creation, more than we love the good things that you have given us, more than we love the gifts? Do we love the giver? Lord, give us grace not to just glibly say, yes, Lord, I love you but to truly reflect and think upon this question before we can truly answer. And so give us grace to be like Peter, to be at that place where we, we are hurt, as it were, to hear this question put to us. We are, of course, religious people. We are, of course, Christians. We are, of course, people who go to church. How dare this question put to us. We, of course, more than anyone else would love you. But really? But do we? Oh God, give us grace to be able to think, to reflect, to meditate on this question today. And what that means. How do we show this in our lives? How do we show in our lives, our passion, our love, our affection for you more than we have affection and love for anything else or anyone else in our lives. Oh God, may, may we have this love for you every day, not just now, not just some, some days, but every day, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And hear our prayer, Lord, as we continue to pray for those on our hearts in our community today. 
So we pray for Graham. We pray for good surgery for him, and we we still we pray for his family as well as they support him during this recovery period. We pray for Monica and her daughter Cheryl, and um, as the chemo that she's going through at this time. We pray, Lord, that you'll strengthen her during the weaknesses during the, of this chemo. Pray for our sister Una, that you'll give her strength. Pray for charity. Lord, we bring Veronica as she recovers from surgery. And Thelma, who is now at home, we pray. We thank you, Lord, that she's now at home. And we pray for all the care for her now that she's at home. We pray for Surya Kala. Lord, that you'll continue to bring healing to her body. Pray for David, Muriel, and Joanna, and Hannah, and Jean Murphy. We pray, Lord, for, for Jean that, uh, that she will get the right care that she needs at this time, um, now that she's also at home. Pray for Veronica and Chester, not only for their physical uh, problems and healing and strength in their bodies. But Lord, we pray for emotional comfort at this time uh, as, they, as they seek to bury their son. We pray for them, that you have strengthened them during this time of weakness. Oh God, strengthen their hearts, we pray, and especially our sister Veronica, who's, who's just devastated at this, the death of her son. We pray that you will strengthen her. Give them grace, Lord, in their weakness. Remember those others who are bereaving, we think of our sisters, comfort and grace, who are mourning the passing of their loved one and their family during this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And hear our prayer, Lord, as we, as we continue to pray for peace in our world, we pray for the people of Sudan. We pray for an end to this conflict, Lord, and uh, this sort of senseless violence that's been going on there. We pray for them, and we pray, Lord, that you'll protect the people who are caught up in this violence, the people in the cities, the towns, the people in the, who, are, who have nothing to do with this, this conflict, but they are caught in the middle. And so, Lord, I pray, we pray for these people, that you'll protect them. Well, we pray for an end to the violence. We pray for the people of Ukraine and those who are still suffering under Putin's army. God, we ask, Lord, in your mercy, hear the prayer of your people, for the people of Ukraine, that there will be peace in that land as well. Bring peace to these people, Lord, and bring an end to this conflict. And this war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So Lord, we pray for our world. We pray for leaders of our world and all those in authority, that you'll give them wisdom to make the right decisions each day, that their, their decisions will be beneficial to the weak, the poor, the vulnerable, the foreigner, and those who are on the margins of our society. So Lord, we pray for justice in our world. We pray for, for, for wisdom for them, that they, will, that they will make righteous decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So Lord, as we pray for our world, we pray for your church as well. We pray, Lord, that you're, you will uh, empower your church to continue to be the salt and the light that you have called us to be in our own little community here, but all over the world, wherever your people are, Lord. We pray that you will empower us uh, to, re to remain faithful to, your, to, to the calling upon our lives. Um, and, and that, Lord, we will seek to love you more than anything else in all of creation. And that, Lord, we will refrain from idolatry and seek to serve you so that, Lord, we can be a, 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 an example of, of your grace to those around us. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. And so, Lord, where there is injury, bring pardon. Where there is doubt, bring faith. Where there is despair, bring hope. Where there is darkness, bring light. And where there is sadness, bring joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The collect for Saint Anselm today. Eternal God, who gave great gifts to your servant Anselm as a pastor and a teacher. Grant that we, like him, may desire you with our whole heart, and so desiring may seek you, and seeking may find you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his grace, his all-sufficient grace to sustain you today, sisters and brothers, whatever you're doing, wherever you're going, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat>